horrible man that your aunt married and for 20 years you had to put up with him at Christmas, finally she's divorced him, you're not going to invite him back for Easter, you know, as much as you spent a lot of your life with him. We have a lot of work to do to repair not just the damage that was done during the referendum and post the referendum, but since. And I think when you look at the TCA, it is a terrible deal for this country. And we're seeing that play out in the consequences for businesses and the consequences for security and the consequences for our energy policy. Every single day, uh, British consumers and British citizens are seeing the impact of the deal that was done for Brexit. But my first observation is none of that means that we can't aim high for what could happen in 2025 if we start to put the work in now. And I think that's what you're seeing today with Keir and Rachel in France with the conversations that they've been having, start to say, actually, we're really serious about this. And to take on that challenge that that is about more than trust, but trust really, really matters. Um, we are just a year away since we had a prime minister who couldn't decide whether the French were friend or foe and rightly was outlived by a lettuce. The UK standing on the world stage has been irreparably damaged and there's going to be a lot of work to be done to tackle that. Um, but secondly, I do take up the challenge that Yannick and Joel put out about, well, frankly, for the European nations involved in this, is it worth the effort? Uh, I would also point to the rise of the far right around Europe and the challenge that that may create in terms of doing politics uh, in the coming years. Um, the As you talk about Brexit fatigue, um, that just that sense of, well, what actually do you want to achieve? And that's why I think it's really important that we are clearer earlier on that you're right, it's not just about trust, it is also about the forward motion. I think that also helps for British politics, because one of the things that we need to get over is the idea that there are Remainers and Brexiteers. We left the European Union in 2019. Remain is not on the agenda because it is a 10, 20 year project that would require more referendums. And frankly, what we're dealing with is British businesses and business jobs that will go to the wall within the next couple of years. Um, and that's really my, my final third question about all of this and what I think should shape our conversation from now on, because if we are to ask our European partners to put time and effort and energy into this, and if we are to put the time and effort and energy of government into this, um, I, we don't believe in the labour movement for Europe that you can make Brexit work, but we do believe that you can solve the problems. And one of the things I think that your report scopes out very well is that actually only dealing with the TCA as it currently stands probably doesn't generate enough of a return for all the energy and input that that would require. So our challenge now as a movement and the work that we're doing is, you know, kind of go big or go home. What are the things that we need to be working towards being able to deliver in 2025 through this process that actually could have a meaningful impact on the challenges that our businesses, that our consumers, that our country is seeing as a result of Brexit? Let me just give you some examples of that. Absolutely, people have talked about a veterinary deal and we're already seeing the government admit that the plans they have for the border will lead to higher inflation and trying to delay those plans. So clearly we need to resolve some of those issues. Um, I'm very conscious Peter is here and he will tell you that alignment is an access, but certainly alignment shows willing to be able to solve some of those problems and I hope would lead to our capacity to really tackle the impact that's having on British farming. Uh, we in the Labour Movement for Europe are very interested in the Pan-European Mediterranean Convention and the possibilities that that might offer for tackling the rules of origin challenges that we can see that are absolutely decimating uh, British manufacturers. And we also think that there is a very clear debate to be had about reforming our visa system. That's not just about youth mobility. Uh, it's not just about our creative industries. We can see a lot of service sectors where already uh, people are losing out jobs because they don't have an EU passport, where businesses are starting to relocate that slow puncture people always said that Brexit would be. It wasn't that people's jobs would move overseas immediately. It's that as businesses, as organisations were starting to make decisions, then clearly they were going to relocate to the 550 million consumers on their doorstep because you can fight many things in life, but you can't fight geography. Um, all of those are challenges ahead for a political movement that has said it wants to secure the fastest growth of the G7 if it's lucky enough to win the next election. And let me be clear, you can, of course, aim to get the fastest growth outside of your relationship with Europe. But that's like saying that you can tie your shoelaces without using your hands. If you use your hands, it's an awful lot easier. So clearly, and today, a very clear statement of intent from Rachel and Keir being in France, starting those discussions, we in the Labour Movement for Europe are really interested in how we can use that time to maximal effect, because ultimately 
we're not sure British business has the time to wait that would be required for this not to be a maximal uh, solution. That frankly, if you are a business now facing the reams and reams of paperwork and the com complications that Brexit has caused, all the, the delays at the border, all those issues in your supply chain, you need to know that an incoming Labour government will be ruthless in prioritising what can be done immediately to assist you. Uh, my plan is for us to be the Reds against red tape. And on that moment, I'll stop and hand over to Peter, I'm sure, who's got some strong ideas.